We are filled with great joy as we welcome His Grace, Philip Anyoro, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Nairobi. Your Grace, Happy Easter. His Grace, it's not the first time he is coming here, and he's also been formed by the Jesuits, so he comes back to a home. Please join me with a round of applause as we welcome him. Where I come from in Rwanda, they say that if your house is hardly visited, you probably need to increase the budget of your kitchen and most likely fire your, your cooks. Your grace, your coming here is a testimony that probably our cooking is good at Hekima. So we are really delighted that you come to us. Hekima College is, is, is like a mustard seed that we have in the gospel. But as you know, it is small but very significant. For nearly 40 years, Hekima College has helped and contributed to the church, the local church here in Nairobi, but also to the continental church and the global church. Very recently, Pope Francis uh, appointed uh, a Montfort missionary to one of the dicasteries in Rome, and that Montfort further has been formed here. We have had a few people who have been uh, named archbishops or even bishops, and they were a product of this place. We have also had wonderful men and women who are contributing to the society across the continent and in the globe. And for this, we are grateful. But as you know, there is always room for improvement. So we are not just here to show the shining star that Hekima is. There is always room for improvement. So as we begin this Mass, we also bring the, our own weaknesses to the altar. We welcome you, and we are delighted that you will be leading us in this Eucharist. And please now lead us and lead your flock of Hekima University College. Welcome. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and my sisters, the spirit of our risen Lord, let us ask for forgiveness of our sins and thus be ready to start a new mission, the mission of the risen Christ, the mission of Easter, in our midst and out, far out there, in the midst of the people of God. Let us ask for forgiveness of our sins as we say, I confess to Almighty God. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who gladdens us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at that gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask hands of those who entered the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for hands, and Peter directed his gaze at him with John and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention upon them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And limping up, he stood and walked, and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat for hands at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice.
Acclamation. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
that very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body and they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said but him they did not see and he said to them all foolish men and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and entered Jerusalem found the eleven gathered together, and those who were with him, with them, who said, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Spirit, we are happy Easter to you all. 
So, fathers, thank you very much for inviting me to this wonderful occasion on this wonderful day to celebrate together this Holy Mass with you and to thank God for our risen Lord and to thank you, my dear young people in the formation, for being so wonderful in singing. As you have started already, listening, you are singing so nicely, eh? And I am very grateful that I'm here today. So thank you for enabling me to come to a place I used to come very often when I was still a young person. I was a student then. I used to come from Innsbruck. And I would visit Father Magari here and others who are here very often just to chat up about a few things. I was trying to see whether I would become a Jesuit. <laughs> Much as the spirit was willing, the body was not willing. <laughs> <laughs> so I remained at a session priest in the spirit. I was formed almost like a Jesuit in Innsbruck, but in the body, <laughs> like, like a, a decision priest. And today's system is very interesting. The, I want to imagine this. This uh, week's Easter season, uh, I was just reflecting about it and I see like it's the, the season of the heart. Uh, every other time you, re, you, read, you read to a reading from the Apostles of uh, Acts of Apostles and then other reading, it has to mention something about the heart. And uh, I was just imagining what I would come out of uh, this season, uh, thinking about the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart of Jesus Christ which was pierced. And your heart, and the heart of Jesus Christ, which is really a Jesuit heart. Because I know we used to celebrate the heart of Jesus, sacred heart of Jesus Christ as a Jesuit day in my formation. So it is about the heart. And uh, here we have been told in the first reading, Peter and John went together preaching what was within their heart, what they really had put into their heart, and reflecting about it in their minds. And in the second reading, we are told, let your, heart, let your heart praise God for what it has seen. And then the third one, did our hearts not burn when it happened like that? And the first reading, as it was being read, I was imagining who could be a Jesuit of the two. The John and Peter, normally they don't find the two of them together in our traditional uh, a, a, a church believes, you know, you find Peter and John, Peter and the, and, and the Nani and the who, and Paul together, and we celebrate with them together. But John and, and Peter, they are two different worlds. Uh, John was a young man, Peter was a very elderly man, but one of them was very spontaneous, touching things with, the, with the, his hands and everything, another one reflected in the heart and in the mind. So when I was thinking like that, I thought maybe John, if you were here today, you would have been a Jesuit. I would have been a Jesuit, I would imagine that. Uh, he goes into that direction. Because even he said like this, what I'm writing here is just very little, but if I was to write everything that you are, I have from my, in my heart, no book could hold, with, hold it in the world. The book the world would be full with books, and I wonder, what the Jesuit has not written, yeah, the, the Kunjo writing, like John it's himself. So I think uh, we are sharing the spirit of Christ's heart, the spirit that he tells us something very new uh, in the creation, ever God created the world, and ever God created man and woman, get created humanity, that once we fell from his own grace, he is bringing us back again. Uh, full of love, full of uh, mercifulness, full of spirit of reconciliation is bringing us back together. And therefore the two walk out, John and Peter, right from the word of from the resurrection. They rush into the tombs because another woman has told them what is in her heart. They may have seen him. If you want to believe, you believe. You don't want, it's up to you, Shaurienu. Maybe I've seen him, I've no time to reason. I've just seen him and his reason is no longer there. 
And they go. They find they reach there, and whoever reaches there first is who? Is who? Our Jesuit. <laughs> <laughs> so he reaches there first, and then he looks inside, and he looks not just with the mere eyes, not just with the mere eyes, because we know he was a very beloved friend of Jesus Christ, and even in his scriptures he hides his name. That is just a beloved friend of Jesus, a great friend, a close friend of Jesus. Something, but now he, the one whoever talks about him, is the one who reveals him, and who reveals. Maybe today in the book of Acts they reveal his name. It was John. So when he goes there, because of the love he had for Jesus Christ, the love that he had for him, just like that one which Mary Magdalene, after being forgiven her sins she had for him, he sees things differently. He sees things with the heart. And he sees he truly he is not among the dead. He has risen. He is somewhere. He sees new life and he contemplates new life. And whatever he contemplates, and whatever he will write, and whatever he shall think about always, we shall never write and complete it because the world will be too small to accommodate all the writings about uh, God, the God of Joseph and John. So uh, it is an invitation for us to reflect about God and to reflect about our calling, especially you now, you young people who are in the formation. This time of um, uh, Easter season is very important for us if we put ourselves in the place of St. John and more, even more so if we put ourselves in the place of the, that's the gospel reading where we hear now uh, the two disciples walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus in a confused environment. Their hearts are confused. Their minds are confused. Their energy, where to direct their, direct their energy is confused. It's just a confused confusion. They don't know what to do. They are talking about things that they want to imagine, but the, the mind is blocked. They want to imagine even further their heart is blocked. They have no energy just to walk and go back to their destinations. And they talk about it, and Jesus Christ comes and enters into their midst. This story is very telling. Enters in their midst, the young people talking about their hopes, which have been shattered and such. And they go with him until the house where they were going to eat. Again, at the time of eating, stomach is very important, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And appetite is very important. Even the devil who tried Adam and Eve to, from the point of view appetite, isn't it? The stomach is very important. So they, they were hungry. They were hungry. They had nothing to eat. They were hungry. So they wanted to eat. And there was food prepared for them and they started eating. And the, uh, the God start revealing to them again what was going on in their minds, in their hearts, and even in the dispensation of their energy. God starts revealing, you didn't know. Did you not know? What did you not know? And they go back to rediscover what actually was happening, and it directs them to a point and direction where they are supposed to go. I like uh, there's that picture of uh, Emmaus where uh, Jesus now the risen Lord with the two uh, uh, with the two disciples are together eating and reflecting and you can see their mind reflected in all that is happening and it, it throws them up to Jerusalem it throws them everywhere the mind is reflected in the drawing he, he, on the wall and uh, in it also that picture I don't know whether you have ever seen it. It is in my house. Welcome, and you will see it. Uh, just <laughs> a small one near the kitchen. Uh, one thing that really touches me on that picture is that woman who was cooking for them and serving them at table. Uh, and then she was listening to what they were talking at table. And at the same time, she was preparing the food. The women are of that gift of uh, what do, we, what do you call it? Multitasking. Yeah, multitasking. So she was multitasking. She was listening and she was preparing food for them. And then when the story came, Jesus Christ, now, did you not do this? Now I send you to go to back to and tell your brothers. That woman turned slowly and 
she has the whole picture of what was happening. Okay? As she was listening, she, as she was cooking, doing everything, she was also following the story with her heart. Even the story with her heart. And they have written there from sight, from sa, sight, S I G H T. Yeah, that sight you see, to insight. I N a sight. From sight to insight. That woman, everything that she was doing and looking was all from sight, sight, and sight. Well, she's seeing pictures and everything. But when Jesus Christ talked, and said, now I do this, go this, and she discovered it was God, it was in her heart. It was from inside, the inside, the eyes or the inside. What our reader today had to say, let our heart rejoice for what they, for seeing what they are, seeing the risen Lord. Let our hearts rejoice. From that point of view, you see also the disciples also, from sight to Inside. John had already seen that also when he went there from sight to inside. This wonderful story of resurrection brings you back to deeper yourself. And you keep wandering in the whole world, wandering, but then finally it goes back into your heart. It goes back into your heart to reflect about your own. And that's where the resurrection begins. So from sight to inside. And that's how it happened. But now with John, I always look at him like this from this point of view. John, who was very conscious that God loved him, he also loved him. He loved Jesus Christ. It was mutual. It was mutual. Jesus Christ did not want even to confirm it. Just like Peter was asked afterwards, Peter, I want to ask you three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Because I love you already. Do you respond with the same? Yeah? Peter was always outside things. Spark. Yeah? First uh, moment, something happens. Even today, he looks at the people and says, you know, me, I have no, I have no what? I have no gold, isn't it? I have no silver. Yeah? But John did not talk to them. He said, you saw what was in the heart. But the two of them combined together to see the human person suffering outside and to the, how the heart can perceive of who provides as such. So John, Jesus Christ knew that. And therefore, he gave him the wonderful, the best gift of life. To see in the inside the risen Lord. And to see in inside his inside that the God loves me. That God loves me. And that one changes everything. It changes one's life. Once you realize that God loves you, just like Magden realized that God loved him, loved her, just like Peter realized again, God loved him, things change within us. Things change within us. It's God grabbing the first chance to tell us, I love you. Look at my wounds. It's not because I want, to, I want you to, or to tell you or tell you that you punished me. No. Look at my wounds because I have loved you and this much I loved you. This much I loved you. Easter and Easter season, my dear young people, is to acknowledge and to build into us that sense of understanding, sense of appreciation that God loves us, the insight that God loves us. If he calls us to a mission, it's because he loves us to serve him in that mission with the dedication. And if we love him, then it's the best. It is calling us to see all even our calling, what we are going to do, to see it from a new point of view, the point of view of Christ himself who loves us. Because you realize, as we grow in the families, if the parents, the child starts growing like, and seeing things like that love that the mother gives, everything is just like that. 
and God wants to show us that one, that he loves us. So he loves you and he wants you to be a Jesuit. He wants you to be what? A Jesuit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not sisters. Not sisters. <laughs> you can decide what you want to have. These are the other alternatives. Eh? Yeah, but for you young men, he loves you. He wants you to be good Jesuits. Yeah. And once he, you, he loves you that way, he'll give you all that you need. So much as you discover that, you can also love him. And how wonderful is it when the two match together. Eh? They match together. They say, there's that song of um, this uh, Nana Muskori. Nana Muskori is a singer like that from, from uh, Greece. Uh, she says, you know, things will never be the same again when the, life, when the love enters into the life of a person. Whether dead or alive, life, love changes. Life cha- changes. Christ is, 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 has died. His love has brought him to resurrection, it changed everybody. And that's what we are celebrating even today. So it is a wonderful thing to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Simply to say this, from another point of view, because it's only really, really seen from many, many points, from many uncles, but from another point of view, that God has loved me. God has loved me. He has risen because of me. And let him rise in me. Let him rise in me. But then, when he loves us like that, he asks you like Peter, and then he says, now, love one another. Love one another as I have loved, as I have loved you. Unless you know how he loved you and how he loved others, you may not love the same. So it is a moment of such. As we grow in this time of lending, uh, not lending, but this uh, 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 a reason, a reason, of the reason the Lord, Easter season, it is time for us to search in which way God wants us to respond to his love in the service as in the calling you have been given. I'm sure God wants you to serve him the best way possible as much as you do so, he's also serving the people of God, his own people in you. So I come here to encourage you also in your vocation, uh, the Jonah in vocation, the Jesuit vocation. That's all. Yeah. As you use a lot of uh, uh, search into the knowledge and so forth, also you put it in your hearts and in your serving or service of the people of God. Just as it, the congregation, just as the society has been and has gone on up to today. You are a necessary, necessary and an important, uh, significant component of the church, the church of Christ. In this resurrection, may he rise again in you anew, and may he guide you, and may he save you, and give you courage, and also give you success in all that you are doing and preparing to become. I wish you every good luck. Kasandene sana. Our Father, we thank you for your son whom you rose from the dead to show us the power of love in our midst. You are love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for you. Never forget.
accept those moments when our hearts burn within us, that that may be always a source of recourse, especially in moments of confusion, or moments of uncertainty, for all is grace. We pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable with God the Almighty Father. We pray, O Lord, that the reverend reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. And by dying he has destroyed our death and by rising he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly prayers and powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they say. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration 
that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin, my Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her most just spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession your presence will rise and fail in help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Philip Agnolo here present, our bishop, David Kamau, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Under the Savior's command and found by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, the Lord be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy you may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, and behold, He who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Shukuru nitawainu wa uzi 
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverend reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is good, Lord is and all the time. Towards the end of our, our Eucharistic celebration, our hearts are filled with joy, right? Yes. Our hearts are burning with joy, and uh, please join me for a start to thank our Archbishop for gracing us with his presence and his touching and profound homily. Thank you very much. <laughs> Here at Ekima College, a school of theology and also peace studies and international relations, a great center of historical research, the Jesuit Historical Institute in Africa, and a center for research, training, and publication, a center as well for safeguarding in Africa to safeguard the vulnerable. We are honored to have his grace with us. I was trying to imagine how much, how many, many times it would take his grace to be able to visit the parishes of this archdiocese. I may be wrong, but I think there are more than 100, probably 150. So you imagine having his presence with us here, it will take probably more than a year if he was to visit every Saturday, every parish, probably two years. So we are really deeply grateful that he dedicated this time with us here at the Hekima. Certainly we are part of his flock, but with his busy schedule, I think we still owe him a round of applause. <laughs> He came back to the idea that this is a matter of the heart and we have to move from sight to insight. I could sense a Jesuit training from Lonegan here. At the same time, we have often said, borrowing from Thomas Ketting, that unless the knowledge that the professors dispense moves from the herd to the heart for both students and the teachers. If it doesn't move from the head to the heart, it will not be lived. So your challenge to us to move from the heart, from the head to the heart, your grace is deeply understood. Thank you very much. Here I will say a few words, a ways of thanking him. But at the same time, I would like to thank all those who have made this occasion possible. The wonderful choir. They have sung very well. We can feel the energy. We can we feel that you can, we could remain here. Your grace, when you feel bored by some liturgy somewhere, remember <laughs> Hekima. <laughs> And I think my colleagues, the other professors, will agree with me. One of the things you miss when you get out of this place is this vitality and this vibrancy. So we are very grateful that you took, and some of you are doing exams. We do this in gratitude also to the chaplain, Father Campbell. I will ask him to rise because he worked with you to prepare for this day. For the James <laughs> And obviously, and for obvious reasons, we are in a Jesuit institution here, and we have the director of the Jesuit community who oversees us. And I think I'm not sure whether when he, pre he welcomed the archbishop, he mentioned that he's director. Father Deo, could you please? 
He's a very humble man. To make this life here at Ekima, Your Grace, we have a vibrant faculty, trained from in different parts, and one of them is your colleague from Innsbruck. But also we have many others in the congregation. Just that he knows you, may I ask the faculty, all those who work together for this wonderful college to stand and we greet our Archbishop. When uh, the, His Grace came in, he was greeted by uh, uh, the Reverend Father Macharia in German, and I got somewhat lost. <laughs> so in, uh, uh, Father Macharia studied in the same university as His Grace. And as we, we come to the closure of this day, please let me uh, thank in a special way Father Banda. Banda prepared our altar savers. Father Emmanuel Banda prepared the, the altar savers. And uh, sometimes the joke out there goes that the Jesuits are, are bad at liturgy. It's wrong. <laughs> it's not correct. I'm sure you have seen it. So, Father Banda, could you please rise and we thank you. Your Grace, we are celebrating 40 years uh, beginning in, in, in August, and we are deeply grateful by this presence, and we hope this is not the last time, and I'm sure even the superior of the community sometime he will reach out to you. So we are deeply grateful that we begin uh, this season and in a new leadership with your presence. Let me ask... Uh, some of the students. Here we have an eminent group of students. It is often not easy to choose who can represent others because they are all extremely talented. So if you have not been chosen, please don't throw stones on me. <laughs> I will ask Sister Lydia and uh, our brother Gregoire Bienvenu. So it's, the name goes very well to welcome also the Archbishop. Let me invite them to come up front. We have a gift for the Archbishop, and uh, they will receive the gift from uh, our registrar. And then, Your Grace, if you allow me, you will stand in front. We exist here because of our students. So it is only right they are the ones who give you the gift. Your Grace. <laughs> Thank you very much, and as I conclude, let me thank in a very special way the Caption TV that joined us. I'm sure this mass is being uh, televised nationwide. It's also part of making Hekima known. So to all our viewers, come and study at Hekima. We are not only inviting you to come and study, we also invite you to come and do rigorous studies and at the same time to be transformed. At the heart of Christianity is a transformation of identity. So within our school of theology, in the peace studies, and hopefully in the coming year or so in what will be Hekima University. Please join us, make Hekima your home, Check on our, on our websites and social medias, Hekima University College, and you will not regret. And I do the same in gratitude to Patches TV, but also gratitude in a special way 
to Vincent, Vincent Wada. He gives himself in an extraordinary way. Please join me as I say. I will not, uh, I will leave it here. La gratitude et la mémoire du cœur. May God continue to bless you. I am uh, uh, rightly re reminded, and probably uh, it's right to do so, that we here at Hekima, it's not only uh, training Jesuits. And as you recall, at the beginning of the Mass, I mentioned that. I said uh, that one of the eminent uh, former alumna, alumni of Hekima is now working with the congregation for interreligious dialogue in Rome, a Montfort missionary. And so here at Hekima, Your Grace, we have more than 12 congregations. So the vibrancy that you see here, obviously I'm a Jesuit, I would love them to be Jesuits, but I would love them to be even more, I would love them to be where God wants them. So to all the congregations here, the Palatines, the Assumptionists, uh, the Montforts, if I go on with the list, we'll be all here. So please, join me as we thank all of you. And since I had sent out an email telling uh, the community, the university community, that we are going to have this mass with His Grace, some of the superiors wrote to me that this is a wonderful thing. Probably even some are in the congregation. Please know that we are honored by your presence. And may God continue to bless you. I will now give back the word to His Grace. Maybe He says a few final words. And then Your Grace, after your the final blessing, we usually have a simple meal. You are a man of great simplicity, but we would invite you to join us with these young men as we share the meal. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Father Marcel. And thank you, Father Rector. It's my first time I'm meeting you. <laughs> yeah, I just really admire the way he looks at me very handsomely. <laughs> and I really appreciate your wonderful participation. I'm going back very much enriched in my spiritual life and also in my sense of feeling in the presence of Christ, the risen Lord. So thank you, not only now the Jesuits, but all other congregations around here. Welcome all the congregations within the country here and all over to learn more from here. Solomon asked for wisdom, and Hekima ni wisdom. So, Joni Mupate Hekima, come and gain wisdom. Thank you very much. I wish, it's my desire to bless you now. And the Lord be with you. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs of an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, 
be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Kapuchin TV Kitambulisho Katoliki We also appreciate the services that we are given by the Kapuchin TV Kapuchin TV uh, I think I've had many people telling us Father we are able to follow your mass I think that's a great thing Let us appreciate the captions. We have agreed with the Kapuchin TV they will be covering all our masses, including the weekday masses. Weekday masses will be covering. The intention being to preach and to reach out to other people, even those who are not able to attend the mass. This is the only Catholic TV that we have. We have never had any Catholic TV. So let us pray for them, let us support them, let us encourage them so that it will be fully Established. They are still limited. They are still limited in the sense that they don't have enough equipment. If they had enough equipment, they would have, you know, they would be able to cover several masses now in our kidouses and in our country, Kenya. You know, like I wish Catholics would support this TV so that it can be as strong as other secular. We have been so much manipul man manipulated by secular TVs. Why don't we also have our own and we can channel now our information. Sometimes I wonder about Christians. You know when we, t we take our adverts to the secular TV, it is okay, but you are supporting it. Sindio, because you are paying. We have also ways of supporting our captured TV. We have, we have. We can support in many ways. Now they are so limited, as I said, because of the resources that they have. So let us support them as an individual. Think of how you can support this TV. Twendele kufanya kazi, baby number 5106.
seven eight account name caps tv you are watching capuchin tv for any complaints comments or compliments on our programming you can either write to us on info at capuchintv.co.ke or you can call us directly on 0717-424-866. Your complaint shall be addressed within seven days. Remember to keep a copy of your communication with us. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Welcome to Language Connection Center International. We are located in Kenda House, fourth floor next to Afia Center along Tomboya in the city of Nairobi. We are professional language trainers, translators, interpreters, editors, rapporteurs, and consultants of international sign, African and unique language of the world. At Language Connection Center, our programs are the most cost effective in the region. At Language Connection Center, our classes run from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., but are flexible and convenient. Call us on 0721 287 034. Visit Language Connection Center today to speak and write languages. Ready for a tasteful and memorable guest experience? Choose the exclusive Radix Hotel for an ideal place to stay and enjoy hospitality at its best. We are a hotel of its own kind. We are a hotel that uh, lead it towards in morals and uh, the upbringing and the teaching of the church. We exemplify compassion in the hospitality industry through our top-notch accommodation and recreational facilities amplified by modern aesthetics. We are also a family-based oriented uh, uh, hotel whereby we support the morals and values of family who have got uh, that uh, abundance of uh, uh, smiley face and uh, goodness and we spread happiness to people by offering our services with that touch of uh, smile. The Radix Hotel guarantees you homely comfort and good taste with a variety of hotel services and facilities that are cut out for your budget and preference. The reason why we call ourselves a home away from home is because of the calmness that we offer to the facilities that we have allowed here. Our services include spacious affordable accommodation rooms, a restaurant with an assortment of delicious cuisines, fully fledged conference halls, open grounds with manicured lawns for outdoor events, clean swimming area, and a well-organized chapel for spiritual reflection. We also do offer food and restaurant services, uh, outside catering services, events and banquets, eh? and also we have some grounds whereby we host uh, corporate events and team building activities. We've got 198 rooms, three conference halls to host various events and uh, trainings, workshops, and seminars. Be our guest today and experience the warmth and service of Christian hospitality. Uh, our menu is a broad, it covers broad spectrum. We cover both local food, uh, we cover uh, oriental food, as well as continental food. So everybody who comes here at the Radix is well catered for. Last time when I was here, I had the pumpkin soup and it looked wonderful. It was so tasty. The Radix was tail of us, a very wonderful service. We are located in Karen, Nairobi, off Langata South Road, next to Apostle of Jesus Shrine. We have the surrounding of uh, the most iconic places surrounding us. We just uh, two kilometers away from the iconic Nairobi National Park. We also have also some other various interesting sightseeing uh, alongside surrounding us. We have the Marty Bros at Gallery, just some few meters away from us. We also have the famous current bricks and uh, museum. 
located uh, also uh, within a, a distance from us. We also have the famous uh, research center, International for Climate Research Institute, IPR, also located within a uh, walking distance from where we are located. When you reside in or board in with us, you needs are well catered for as you can have walk along in uh, one of uh, our main shopping malls like the Galeria shopping mall, the Well shopping mall and we also have uh, a petrol station just within uh, the vicinity of our hotel. Call our office at 0708-990451 or 0105-020-760 or 0794-897277. For inquiries and bookings. You can also write to us via email to reception at the Ladix Hotel .co .ke or at the reception the Ladix at gmail .com or at info the Ladix Hotel .co .ke. For updates about our services, offers, and special banqueting, follow us on Facebook at the Radix Hotel. Twitter handle at D underscore Radix underscore hotel and Instagram at underscore Radix dot Nairobi. Welcome to the Radix Hotel. You are home away from home. Karibun. The Radix Hotel, a true definition of your home away from home. Luke's College of Health Sciences North Kinangop is certified by the Nursing Council of Kenya and TVET to offer diploma and certificate courses in nursing. We are currently offering uh, the Kenya Registered Community Health Nursing, that is the diploma. Every year we have two intakes, that is in March and September. Our diploma courses include Diploma in Kenya Registered Community Health Nursing, Diploma in Perioperative Theatre Technology, Diploma in Community Health Assistant, Diploma in Counseling Psychology, and Diploma in Health Records. We also have certificate courses in perioperative theatre technology, certificate in community health assistant, counselling psychology, certificate in health records and certificate in social work and community development. The college also offers KCSE bridging or NEC receipt for candidates who wish to enroll for diploma in nursing. We also have other programs that are supporting the college like the bridging whereby we take next students who receive maybe one or two subjects and then once they qualify they join the nursing program. The college has been revamped to improve the quality of services and a new management of the Catholic Diocese of Nyahururu. The school started in 1991 and uh, the Catholic bishops and it has been uh, with the bishops since then until uh, March of uh, 2022 when it was handed over to the, to the diocese of Nyahururu. So when the bishop received the news and he came and said that now the school belongs to the diocese, we welcomed the idea and uh, now the hospital was asked to host also the, the school. So we have the same board of management and currently I am the chairman.
who are also the uh, chairman of the school. We are located at a serene environment in the outskirts of Abadea Ranges in Nyandarwa County, approximately 20 kilometers from Naivasha town and adjacent to North Kinangop Catholic Hospital. Seize the opportunity in our ongoing May and September 2023 intakes. For further inquiries, contact the college principal on 0720-430-311 or 0780-430-312 or email us at kecstlooks at yahoo.com. Hey kids, Burudika and Star Times. We have lots of exciting shows to brighten up your world. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Enjoy SD Kids, Jim Jam, Baby TV, Toonami, Da Vinci, and the all-new Cartoon Channel. Recharge your monthly subscription today and get upgraded to the next higher bouquet to enjoy more cartoons for both big and little kids with all your favorite cartoon friends. Wow, that's amazing! On the road, link your decoder to the Star Times On app to make sure you enjoy your favorite cartoons on Star Times On. Recharge your monthly subscription today and get upgraded to the next higher bouquet to watch fantastic channels and so many fun shows. Star Times, enjoy digital life. I'm proud of St. Mary's Primary School. It's the foundation to our future. It introduces rules and regulations right from nursery school. St. Mary's Primary School Ongatarongai offers a strong fundamental elementary education to children in preparatory, primary and junior secondary school. Shule hii ilianzishwa miaka ya tisini chini ya wa missionary wa Komboni na imeendelea kukua kwa kasi na kutolea matoleo uh, matokeo mema katika masomo na katika uh, malezi kamilifu ya watoto wanaopitia shule hii it enrolls children from different backgrounds different characters and appreciates different religion we are a faith-based mixed-day school under the Catholic Diocese of Ngong, run and managed by the Evangelizing Sisters of Mary. We have currently a population of about 653 learners, but the school can hold around a thousand and something learners. The school has earned a long-standing reputation for over 30 years of preparing youngsters for higher educational levels. Our school can com comfortably compete with giant schools nationally. This is a result of our fighting spirit and never say die attitude. St. Mary's Primary School thrives in the holistic formation of learners morally, academically and talent-wise with more pertinence in spiritual growth. Shule hii ambaye kwa katika mazingira ya kanisa watoto wanajiandaa vizuri kwa maisha ya sala wanahudhuria ibada kanisani kila alamisi wanashiriki katika neno la Mungu ku, kuimba wana walimu ambao wanawaelekeza vizuri pia shule hii tunawasaidia wanafunzi kutambua talanta mbalimbali tuna ile brass band na CBC kweli tunaizingatia sana katika shule hii yetu in our school we not only do academic activities but also co-curricular activities that include clubs such as music band, scouts club, wildlife club, we are tomorrow. and also sports, football, volleyball, basketball, and, and athletics. We take pride in our pool of teaching and non-teaching staff who are experts in compassionate pedagogy. We have staff members who are well-formed, excellent, 
all round members who are competent to run the school efficiently and effectively. I'm proud of St. Mary's Primary School. There are guidance and counseling sessions that enable the learners to inculcate the Christian values in themselves. The school is a home to plenty state-of-the-art facilities attuned to the modern needs of learners. We have a vast, evergreen pitch, magnificent modern buildings that encompass classrooms, libraries, laboratory, computer room, home science room, a dining hall, and an administration block. Fa vyote vinao saidia mwanafunzi kuweza kusoma vyema na kufaulu katika masomo. We also have enough buses to ferry pupils to and from school. St. Mary's School embraces discipline as the backbone of our success. The school motto is discipline, knowledge and wisdom. Enroll your child in St. Mary's Primary School on Gatarongai and let us cultivate in them the spirit of discipline, knowledge and wisdom. Na nasema ukileta mtoto wako hapa ume, umepata mahali pazuri na na tunakuhakikishia ya kwamba mtoto huyo watakuwa wa kutegemewa kwa familia na kwa jamii na kwa taifa nzima. For enrollment procedures, visit us today at the heart of Ongata Rongai, 200 meters off Magadi Road in the vast Nairobi metropolitan. A very good conducive learning environment, quiet, far from noise, somehow interior from the main road. You can make inquiries to the school administration on 0112-706-628 or email us via St. Mary's Primary 98 at gmail.com. Na penda kwa karibisha nyote kwa shule yetu ya msingi ya mtakatifu Maria Ongata Rongai. Kila mmoja anaweza kupata nafasi ya kuweza kumleta mtoto maana karo yetu eco friendly. Remember, a discipline child is a discipline community. Choose St. Mary's Primary School and you won't regret academically. Choose St. Mary's Primary School Ongata Rongai for a strong, endearing educational foundation.